now? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I praise you for this day, Lord. You're in the habit to praise you of your people. I thank you for this congregation, God. I thank you for bringing us together. God, I present this program to you, and we thank you and we praise you for it. In the name of Jesus, amen. I'm a great believer in Jesus Christ. I struggle with forgiveness and trust issues. My name is Ron. I'd introduce my wife here, Carolyn, stand please, my wife here. She helps keep me straight, and that's hard. And then Miss Kitty is coming on as a state rep, so I'm helping working with her, training her. Thank you. Uh, Celebrate Recovery is a Christ-centered recovery program. You have all these programs out there, and I love them, but this is Christ-centered. Jesus is the only one who can fix it. Now, I'm going to ask something from the congregation. This is where you participate. You look at the board up here, the addictions of Celebrate Recovery. That's just part of them. There's a lot of hurts, habits, and hang-ups. 38% who come to Celebrate Recovery is with drug and alcohol. The rest is life issues. Look at this list. Who... You look at it and see on the board here who is somebody in your family you work with or somebody you know struggles with those issues or yourself. Stand up, please. You may be seated. Thank you. You see, it's a powerful um, message of Celebrate Recovery. And I'll tell you, God's doing a work in it. I had to... Let me put this on. Celebrate Recovery is a biblical and balanced program. It was designed as a program to help those struggling with any hurt, any habit, or hang up, showing them the loving power of Jesus Christ. The 12 steps and the uh, biblical comparison and eight principles is based on the Beatitudes from the Sermon on the Mount. This is a Christ centered Bible-believing Celebrate Recovery program. And the thing is, in Celebrate Recovery, it follows the local policy of the local church. Celebrate Recovery does not dictate to anyone. It follows the policies like the men's ministry, latest ministry, a home missions of the church. It's, another, it's a ministry of the church. You have to have senior pastor support. If you don't have pastor support and celebrate recovery, it's going to be hard to, to go. I'll tell you that right now. And I tell people, pray continually. Pray about this ministry for Second Baptist. Pray if this is what God wants here at Second Baptist. And then you have a 90-day startup uh, phase that we go through. And you have a leader's guide that you follow. And at the end of this presentation... We'll have question and answer session, and then we'll have an information table out there. We'll show you the leader's guide and show you, it tells you what do you have to do in CR. What's critical about Celebrate Recovery is anonymity, confidentiality is critical. What you see in those meetings, what is shared in those meetings, stays in those meetings. And like I say, we have an information table in the back 
at the end of this uh, today, you can go back there and pick up some handouts. It'll tell you what CR is, what it's not. Uh, you have a ministry leader who runs the Celebrate Recovery. And the thing is, they have to go through a 12-step program to be the leader of it. And I know some of them have completed it already. Training, like in the military, I was in the military, you have to have training. In Celebrate Recovery, you need training. And that training in the Celebrate Recovery class, how to teach a class, and help people keep coming back to the program. In Celebrate Recovery, when you meet on a night that you meet, you can either have a meal or snacks. I recommend when you start the Celebrate Recovery program that you do snacks because you don't provide a meal if you don't know how many is coming. So be good stewards of God's money. Do a snack to start out and then phase into the meal. The Celebrate Recovery consists of a large group meeting, like this would be a large group, we would say, it lasts one hour. It could go five minutes over or five minutes below, but it's one hour. It consists of opening in prayer, worship songs, like the, we had a great worship here. And I like to thank those who've done the cardboard testimony. Amen. That is awesome of what God's changing lives. And I'll say this now Celebrate Recovery is now in 35,000 churches in the United States and overseas. And it's growing every day. We're working with 10 other churches now. I can't hardly keep, keep them all going with so much going on, but I praise God for it. You have the worship songs in the large group. You read the 12 steps or eight principles. And we have copies of that in the foyer in the back on the information table that tells you what it is. And the thing is, you have a chip system. I didn't bring my chips up here, but you have chips. It's, it's a milestone that you get in Celebrate Recovery. And it starts out with this blue chip. Have it on my key ring. That's just a chip. That is the surrender chip that you give it to God. I can't fix a problem. You can't fix it. Only God can fix the problem of addiction. And I'm going to tell you, with this virus going on, it's a lot of people are going to be coming into the churches needing hope. That hope's in Jesus Christ. Amen. And the thing is, uh, chips is very important. We had one guy come to our CR. He got a, a chip for 39 years being sober. Amen. So that's a milestone. And each lesson you have each week in the large group, you have a lesson our little leader's guide is given by one of the leaders. The next week you have a personal testimony of what, uh, uh, what somebody's went through, their story, their life story, how God has changed their lives. Then you take up an offering. Some CRs do not do an offering. I recommend you do an offering to help support the ministry of Celebrate Recovery. People don't have to give, but you said an offering's uh, here. It helps to buy the books for the snacks and all that. You end it with a serenity prayer is what you do. All right. Uh, usually what I do, but I'm not doing it today, uh, on the 12 steps and 8 principles, they're in the back on the information table. Usually I have my wife do, do that part, but for time I decided I'll do it today. She said, you do it. That's okay. So copies will be in the back, and then you have books. Uh, it's four books in a step study class. Uh, it's uh, 52 lessons, and I thank God for that. And I would like to recognize, I don't know where he's at, I can't sit in here, but we, I have been working on a step study. This is my 13th step study I've taught. I keep saying I'm going to take a break, and I never do. I get wrapped up in it again. It helps me keep straight. But we're having a class who just completed the 12-step program uh, last Tuesday. I've done the lesson. And they're going to have, get a certificate this coming Thursday night at our church in Hiram, Pleasant Grove Baptist Church in Hiram, where our Celebrate Recovery is. And we have six guys uh, completing the 12 steps. One of those persons is somebody from here, Second Baptist, David Wright. Where's David? Amen. 
I'm proud of David uh, completing the 12 steps. Uh, how many do you need to start this ministry? I've learned on this in the last year with starting some CRs. I've been a state rep for about three years. I've been in Celebrate Recovery for 13 years. And I thank God. People, how do you get through what you get through? Jesus Christ and a 12-step program. That's what it's all about. How many people need to start it? Well, you need a, a ministry leader. You need a co-leader. You need somebody to uh, lead your open share for women and a co-leader. You need somebody to lead the open share for the men because this is gender specific. Men go in one group. Ladies go in another group. You have a, a leader and a co-leader. You have somebody doing the meals. This music was awesome this morning. Give God a hand for that this morning. You have music. Yes, yeah, so I'm doing that. I found out, I've learned on this in the last year, helping start a CR in uh, Tucker, that I, I recommend you build a foundation, that you start out with at least 10 people to help launch this Celebrate Recovery. That gives you a good sound foundation, and then you train those people who's committed. Now, does, does that mean everybody has to go through the 12 step? We encourage you to go through the 12 steps. As long as the leadership goes through it, that's what counts, and we can help you with that. Training is very important, and people don't realize you have to be committed to it. And also, I went to a church and we're doing CR. I said, Where's your sign outside? Oh, can I put a sign up? I said, How do people know you have to celebrate recovery? Put a sign up out in the front. We have Celebrate Recovery. We have ours. It meets on Thursday night, 545 meal, uh, 745, large group. And also, you can put a yard sign up and give you some information. Uh, about two years ago, got a brainstorm. You know, we have yard signs to put for yard sale in your yard. We got one put together for Celebrate Recovery. We put our church on it, name on it, and another church name on it. You know what we did? We took it to the restaurants and places in our county. Took it to the DUI school. A guy seen it at the DUI school in Dallas, Georgia. He came to our CR that night and got saved. That's what it's all about. We've had three people get saved at our CR in the last three weeks. I thank God for that. <laughs> yes, amen. The open share groups is for men and the open share groups for women, gender specific. The open share for women might be life issues, might be chemical dependency. But the thing is, they meet for another hour. It's a two hour program. Large group one hour, small group another hour. And then I, in your large group, as you said, you'll have a testimony or a lesson. You have guidelines that you have to follow in the small groups. And that's what I I'm stickler on that. Celebrate Recovery started in 1991 at Saddleback Church in California. And they've learned some errors, some mistakes on it. They rewrote it. It works. Lives have been changed. Three phases, I said. Phase one is uh, 30 days. You investigate, communicate, and invite people. That's what you've done here today. That's phase one. Visit as many CRs as you can. And on the table in the back, I have a list of Celebrate Recoveries all around. Who the ministry leader is, the telephone number, what night they meet. Now, with the virus going on, some of them have not come back yet, so you have to call them to see if they're meeting in person or online. Normally, we don't do online, but they're doing it because of the virus. But get your list of locations. Contact your state rep, which y'all have done here. And the thing is about CR, I tell every church, you have your own personality. Don't copy anybody else. Be yourself. Follow DNA. Follow the guidelines. And that's on the table in the back. Tells you the guidelines. And order your celebration recovery starter kit. That's a kit that you get that has the chips, the books, Kind of tells you, the leader's guide tells you what it all works on. And uh, 
A pastor has a website on that. Uh, also, they have one-day seminars and three-day uh, three seminars. Well, with the virus, we used to go to uh, Tennessee for a three-day conference. And we've been to about five conferences ourselves. And you talk about celebration. It's 5,000 people there. We celebrate with COVID all over the world. So when they open back up, we'll have some in 2021, some one day maybe in this area, you get to go to them, and they're usually pretty cheap to go to them one day, and you get a lot of information. And also, Life's Healing Choices is one of the books that uh, is sponsored by Celebrate Recovery. We have a copy in the back. Uh, Pastor, you might want to look at that because you could take that book and do some sermons on that to your congregation. Give you some material on it. Communicate with your church, your bulletin, your flyer. I found out in Celebrate Recovery, what I usually do as a state rep, I meet with the pastor, the elders, the deacons, or the staff, explain this presentation. But I had a church two years ago come to me and said, Ron, would you do the evening service? I said, what? Come do it to the congregation. That way the whole congregation knows what it's all about. And then we ask questions and answers. And I think that's more beneficial because I've added to my presentation because of that. So phase two is the 60-day train and prepare. You get the lesson guide. You follow the uh, weekly meeting. You visit other CRs. And the thing is, I, I found this out. You look at a night you want to do your step study. I recommend you do it another night. Because what we did with David, we went, uh, we started in January. We go one hour and a half, two hours every Tuesday night. That's commitment, but you get the class done faster than you do it if you do it one hour each week. Uh, God has blessed me. Uh, I'm retired. I'm able to get around. I work with drug court in our county. I work with the judges, the probation officers. And we have a sign-up sheet, attendance sheet, that people are mandated to sign because if the courts need some information, we have it for them, and it helps them to get their kids back. It helps them uh, in the court. A lot of times I'll go to the court and it's just, oh, I don't know Mr. Coleman. And that's what it's all about. And then phase three is you, you start your, get ready to start your CR. You have food or snacks. And one thing we recommend, you have child care. Because some people come straight from work or bring the kids. You have a snack uh, or you have a meal. You have child care where they can, the kids can go in there. And we don't charge. To determine the night you want to do CR. We do ours on Thursday night. <coughs> We've been doing, uh, we celebrated 15, or 15 years two weeks ago at our church. Celebrate recovery. We're meeting on Thursday night. Look at the night you want to do your CR. If you do it on, I found this out, if you do it on Sunday, uh, it's great, Sunday afternoon, some of them have done that. But I've had some do it on Sunday afternoon, we have Mother's Day, our Father's Day. Well, we're going to cancel it for that day. Addiction don't take a, a vacation, doesn't take a break. Amen. So you need to make sure you have that CR on the day that you can meet. Uh, you might scale it down on a holiday. I know Rock Mart has one, and they scale it down at Thanksgiving, which is on a holiday, on Monday, because Monday's a holiday. Some people say, oh, it's a holiday, so we're not going to do CR. You can't do that. Uh, and one thing I've learned, and I told uh, Miss Kitty, I have trained her, uh, I, do, I, I send out reports every week to every ministry leader that I'm responsible for. I have 30 churches. I'm over right now, and it's growing. But I send out emails every week, and I think it's very important that the ministry leaders or people that I send it out to respond back. Hey, I got it, good information or something, because I don't know if they even got it. So that's something I've learned. Uh, there are seven keys in Celebrate Recovery. Key one, leadership training. And all of this is in the, in the starter kit or in the leader's guide. Senior pastor support is critical. Your curriculum, you'll see that on the information table in the back. It shows the books that we used. Outreach, go outreach to the community. Fellowship events, we used to, um, 
God blessed me in it. And I give God the credit. Uh, we done a picnic in the park in Dallas, Georgia. We started, uh, first year we done it, but I got in charge for it because I was in logistics in the military. We had maybe 50 people come at 60. Last year, or year for last, that was the last one we did, I couldn't do it. It was just too much for me, a lot of work on it. We had 35 churches, CRs, came to the picnic in the park on, in September. We had over 600 people attend the picnic in the park. That's an outreach. But you can do things in your community, a 4K walk, set a table up, tell them about Celebrate Recovery, tell them about new groups in your worship. Also, Celebrate, uh, Celebrate Recovery has a program for the kids, Celebration Place, called Ages 4 to 12. Then you have the landing, which is age 13 to 17. And uh, a praise, we've struggled with the landing, getting to keep the leaders to do it right. And we've got, uh, I've done it for a couple of weeks to train and get it, I had to learn it as a state rep. So we've got a young couple, he's a major in the military, uh, reserves, and he took, him and his wife took it over. We're running up to 17 people on a Thursday night at our landing. And we're running probably eight or nine in our celebration place. So we have something for the whole church in Celebrate Recovery. And I will tell you, it works. And the thing, thing is, like I said, we, we work it. We've been involved in it. But I found that somebody asked, how do you get through certain things you get through? I, I looked at the cardboard testimony. That's powerful. But in that, I lost a daughter, got killed, a seven-year-old got killed. I never dealt with that until I got to celebrate recovery. I dealt with the root of the problem, not the surface up at the bottom. And I feel led to say this this morning. God's given me the ability to speak about recovery. I was sexually abused as a child. I never said anything about that. That's taboo. You don't say anything about it. But in Celebrate Recovery, I'm free today because of Jesus Christ. The bondage doesn't have a hold on me. It doesn't have a hold on you. This is what we see. You've seen those testimonies today. That shows you what God's doing to Celebrate Recovery. People say, how do you get through that, Ron? I said, Jesus Christ, number one. And a 12-step program, Celebrate Recovery. That's how I get through it. Do it. Oh, you got it together, Ron. No, I don't, right? Uh, Kay, I mean, I pick on her. She picked on me before, and I picked on her uh, at one of her shows. But it works. Jesus Christ is the answer. This is a Christ-centered recovery program. You pray about it. Then you pray about it. Then you pray about it. That God will lead if this is what he wants to do. As I said, it's in 35,000 churches. It's a great ministry. And I see God moving in it through the love of Jesus Christ. When you come to celebrate recovery, you're not judged. Now, I've done a lesson the other week. And they never know what I'm going to do when I do a lesson. I do object lessons with it. I come in, short sleeve shirt on. I had these sleeves you wear with tattoos. I walked in, Ron, Tattoos. But we don't judge who comes through these doors. When people come here on Sunday morning, we don't judge them. We love them. That's what God wants us to do in Celebrate Recovery. Now, I've given you a lot of information. I want you, after the, uh, this program, uh, Miss Kitty and my wife will be at the information table, show you some of the stuff that I've talked about, get copies of handouts to give you information about it. And let me tell you, it's exciting what God's doing to Celebrate Recovery. So I'm going to open this up question to answer. Who would like to have a question to ask about Celebrate Recovery that I did not answer? Anybody like to ask a question about it? That's why I learned when I'd done this a couple of years ago, I had about six, seven questions from the congregation. Didn't think of it. So I added to it what I do my presentation. Anybody have a question like to ask? We got a microphone up here. You can ask the question. Now, y'all Baptists, you're quiet, so somebody should have a question. 
How many of you have been to a Celebrate Recovery meeting somewhere? Raise your hand. It works. It works if you're working. Well, I thank you for giving the opportunity to come and speak to you today, give you information about Celebrate Recovery, but I want you to get this about Celebrate Recovery. It's Christ-centered. This whole ministry is Christ-centered recovery program. He's the only one who can fix it and help you to hurt having hang-ups. All that on that list, we've done that at one church, and the guy said, uh-oh, I got this one, I got this one, I got this one. We never know. But let me tell you, let us be the church and celebrate recovery, and God will bless you. Pastor, turn over to you.